why are we learning astrology it may have multiple purposes different for different people but it can all be categorized into two major points one is for prediction though people think that prediction is the major or prediction is the major purpose of vedic astrology but it is not prediction is just a tool to let us know what is going to happen in future so that we can prepare accordingly preparing ourselves for forthcoming changes and making improvement in ourselves by knowing beforehand which issues which problems which weaknesses can cause a particular situation to happen in future self improvement is the main purpose of jyotish or astrology as i understand now see self improvement or self development like we perceive today people think that it is a singular formula books are written on self help also but it's not the same one method which works for one person may not work for others so astrology gives you a specified personalized advice regarding how to improve yourself sometimes we feel that people are bounded by the results of karma results of karma and we cannot change it but that's not the reality if we cannot change anything what is the purpose of learning astrology prediction is a very simple thing to do if only prediction was the purpose then i think 100 to 100 shlokas must have been enough for predictions only but traditionally it is believed that jyotish comprises of more than 5 lakh shlokas so only prediction is not the point self improvement upliftment of soul to get the ultimate emancipation is the purpose of astrology for which it is called the eyes of the vedas now to break free from the karma and to improve ourselves we have to understand what are our weaknesses and which problems are holding us what issues are holding us we should identify them and after identification we should work with them in this particular video i am going to talk about shadripus the six weaknesses of any human being the one have to overcome these weaknesses to become a perfect human a perfect human which is good for the society good for their family and good for everyone this is shadripu it gives you emancipation perfection perfecting yourself and your nature will give you emancipation then comes ashtapash pash means noose these ashtapas are those eight things which is stopping people from realizing the god right ashtapas are those eight bondages which stops one from self realization and this come from tantras lastly there is navadha bhakti nine types of devotion now as one focuses on emancipation as one focuses on self improvement the real change can only be given by the supreme god head to reach the god there are multiple methods and our sages of yore have identified nine major streams so which stream is useful for you to realize god to become more spiritual i am also going to discuss in this particular video now coming first to shadripus now i am not saying that only one of the shadripu is disturbing you generally as one matures and grows up someone who is conscious about what they are doing not living in their life in hallucinations you will find that they have controlled 
many of these things. For example, anger. We know any mature person who lives in reality will have their anger under control. Those who have an expanded intelligence and understanding. Those who are living at very base level who are delusioned will not be able to identify their anger and ego. That's the point. So these Shadripus are into everyone. As we grow up and as we mature, many of these Shadripus we overcome. But as per the horoscope, there can be few Shadripus that can cling to your psyche so deeply that you are not able to identify them or you say you are not able to help with them. You are not able to overcome them. So let's understand which are those and both this Shadripu and this Ashtpash can be taken control once you realize it and you stop doing it and then Navda Bhakti will ultimately help you. The Shadripu is to be seen from the sixth house according to me. Mad, ahankar or what we know as ego is the basic sh basic shad ripu. Shad means six, ripu means enemies. Is the basic enemy which create all the other ripus, all the other weaknesses. Lust, anger and greed. If these weaknesses are there in the person, it makes one go to hell. That means lust, anger and greed. These weaknesses binds the mind and psyche of the person as such that they will start committing those karmas who will lead to hell. So these are the basic things that one should control. In this, the first two, the lust and anger are the major reasons of why we are having difficulties in our life. They bring difficult experiences in our life. So if how do you use it? If someone is having bad experiences in their life, they are getting struck into relationship, they are having problem everywhere with their bosses, with their friends, with their family members, one should understand that lust and anger is there in high quantity in such person and one should control their lust and one should control their anger. Right? If a person is bounded by these weaknesses, then his life is completely governed by destiny. And according to me, planets influencing the sixth house by being the lord of the sixth house, situated in the sixth house, aspecting the sixth house, indicates what are your weaknesses. Right? And if, if one is strongly binded by these weaknesses, then his life will be completely governed by destiny. As one moves towards self-realization, the grip of destiny will lose. And the real realization of the love of the Supreme Godhead cannot be done without perfecting over these Shadripus. The worldly love that you can experience, but that love which transcends, that love which takes you to the You know, the love that Rumi talks about, that real love, you cannot realize in totality until and unless you have controlled these Shadrakus, you have came over these Shadrakus completely. So this is something that has to be done. Otherwise, the you see, you will fail in love everywhere if you do not control these things. Many a times, despite having a very loving partner, because of lust, people cheat and they lose the loving life partner. Because of anger, people are not able to realize how much someone is doing for them. And then one loses the person who is loving them from the core of their heart. So real realization of love will only come when these Shadripus are taken under control. What basically happens, everyone experiences these Shadripus. Slowly, slowly, as they grow up, they understand the implications. And once they understand the implication, they do not engage further with it. But this happens with realized mature souls only. Many a times you will see that though the person have grown up in age, but they have not had realization. 
Age have nothing to do with realization. Some person can have realization quite early in life. These are spiritual people like Ramana Maharshi, Ramakrishna Paramhans. Whereas one can remain delusional for a lifetime. These are the haters and angry people which you see everywhere. Right? In this Sadripus, the first one is more delusion. Because of delusion, what happens? One ignores the Atman or the inner consciousness. This is signified by moon. This ignorance of inner consciousness produces ego, which gives one arrogance. This ego is signified by Jupiter. In this arrogant mind, personal desires, karma starts flourishing, which is signified by Venus. After fulfilling small desires, one wants more and more desire to be fulfilled and this gives birth to greed, what is known as lobe, which is signified by Mercury. When one, fa when one fails to fulfill all their wishes and desires, then they have the next Sadriku, that is anger, growth, which is signified by Mars. And ultimately, because the person can only be angry but cannot achieve, because now he have a lot of Shadripus, one starts envying others. One starts having envy with others. That is called Matsari. That is signified by Saturn. So basically put delusion is indicated by moon. Arrogance is indicated by Jupiter. Personal desire, lust is indicated by Venus. Greed is indicated by Mercury. Anger is indicated by Mars. And envy is indicated by Saturn. Based on the planets who are influencing the sixth house planet, situated in the sixth house planet, aspecting the sixth house, the lord of the sixth house, one should understand what are the weaknesses of the native. These weaknesses will be subconsciously present in his life. These weaknesses will be subconsciously present in his psyche, which he will not be able to realize until and unless explicitly told. And these weaknesses will give birth to the problems that he is having. And because of these weaknesses, he will feel that his life is completely governed by destiny. What one should do? They should realize it. They should realize these weaknesses and will try to overcome it. For an example, take this horoscope. Here what you see Sixth house indicates weaknesses. You see moon is there in sixth house and moon indicates delusion. So this person is delusional. He is thinking what he wants to think. What delusion does? It ignores the inner consciousness. The person is very strict to his thinking and he is not inquiring about truth but completely making decisions only because of his thinking or his impressions. That is the first thing. No planet is influencing the sixth house, but the sixth lord is Mercury and Mercury indicates greed. Another major problem that this person is having is the problem of greed. This person should consciously try to control his greed and should not become delusional. That means should not make quick impressions and rather should try to find the reality before reaching to any conclusion, it will be better if the person does not reach at any conclusion at all. This way, his life will slowly, slowly start improving and then great transformation will come. Many a times you will see that to some people, even bad planets do not affect much. Whereas to some people, even a slight bad combination present in the horoscope completely shakes their life. In the first case, one have good control over these weaknesses. In the second case, one do not have any control over these weaknesses. This is the only difference. Once you realize your weaknesses and overcome it, even very bad dashas and tradashas will not impact you that badly as it used to do before. Ignorance, known as avidya, 
is the first cause of suffering. It obstructs the higher self by firmly establishing negative habits and resisting change. This is the nature of moon. This will be the quality if moon is influencing the sixth house. Ego makes one attached to themselves. Ego makes one think they are center of the world. This is given by Jupiter. Attachment which is given by Venus produces desire for material objects, desire for relationships, desire of status, desire of power and other desires which one should control if Venus is connected to sixth house. If Saturn is connected to sixth house, then aversion or anger towards unpleasant thing, unpleasant people and unpleasant experiences will be there which one have to overcome. If Mercury is connected to sixth house, that clinging to life, fear of death, desire to live a lot, that is called Abhinivesh, will be strongly present in the life of the native. So to these things, one should also be very careful about it. If moon is in the sixth, moon is connected to sixth house, remove ignorance. Jupiter is connected to the sixth house, control your ego. Venus is connected to sixth house, control your attachment. Saturn is connected to sixth house, control your aversion. Mercury is connected to sixth house, Control your attachment toward things. Right? This is lesson number one about Shadri. When you control your Shadri pose, when you control these weaknesses, what will happen? I have already told you. The next thing is Ashtapash. This comes from Tantra. And according to Tantra, this Ashtapash or eight news, eight nooses binds one from the realization of God. This, according to me, should be seen with respect to the 8th house. Planet connected to the 8th house, planet affecting the 8th house, planet situated in the 8th house. The first Ashtapash is Ghrana, also known as Aversion. It is indicated by Rahu. In this, what happens? One starts disliking a particular god or practice of particular set of devotees. This is the first foundation. Second foundation is Lajja, shame, that is indicated by Venus. Here, when one is told to do something, one feels shame in doing that for God. The third Pash is fear, that is indicated by Moon. One should not fear when it comes to doing things related to God. One should have a very firm approach that the gods are our parents and until and unless gods are like our mother and father and until and unless we start doing something which is harmful for others, so until and unless we approach them with negative, uh, uh, with negative thoughts in our mind, they are not going to harm us. Disgust is produced by Mercury. Disgust in Spiritual practices, religious practices is produced by Mercury. Doubt in whether the mantra chanting will work, whether the God will help or not comes by Saturn. A lot of attachment to one's clan that I am Brahmin, I will not do this. I am I am like I am Hindu, I will not adopt Buddhist meditation practices. This comes because of Mars. Mars. Attachment to the lineage. Thinking that only the God who is worshipped in our lineage is the supreme God, other spiritual practices and gods worshipped by others are bad, they cannot give emancipation, the feeling of supremacy comes by Jupiter and ultimately the ego, the ego of thinking that God is nothing, only humans can change what is there in this idol of stone, etc. comes through sun. So whichever planet is connected to the 8th house, that will be your hindrance, your bondage in complete realization of Godhead. In my consultations, I always advise people to stay away from this particular thought because this is the thought which stops the blessings to channelize in the life of the native. Many a times what you will see that because of these bondages of the psyche, these bondages of the nature of the person, 
the blessing of the deity will not reach him despite multiple efforts for an example in the same horoscope you see eight houses having mars mercury it is expected by saturn lorded by sun because of mars attachment to the clan that i am born into this particular see the difference between mars and jupiter is jupiter indicates you are hating the religious practices of people from another religion mars indicates you hate the religious practices of people from your religion only but of a different caste right this is the difference so because of mars in the 8th house this person is strongly clinging to their practices it is like the person is a brahmin and he thinks that only gayatri mantra chanting is uh, sufficient other chanting should not be done this approach should be left out by the native otherwise the realization of godhead and the more than the realization of godhead because many people can argue that realization of godhead is not our purpose so not only realization of godhead but the channeling of blessings will also be blocked because of this particular reason mars is connected to 8th house because mercury is connected to 8th house disgust disgust into doing something for an example if you tell the person to sweep the floor of temple the person may so discuss that this is lower level work i will not do it this is what is signified by mercury and to tackle this mercury such works such as cleaning the temple sweeping the temple cleaning the idols cleaning the leftover of the birds in the uh, sanctum sanctorium of the temple in the complex of the temple should be done this will be the best mercury remedy that this person can do so along with advising what is stopping the channelization of blessings in their life you can also advise the remedies to these people and actually the shad ripu the six weaknesses and the ashtapad the eight nooses related to 6th house and 8th house are the greatest remedy of the 6th house and 8th house i am not saying this the hindu vedic tradition of learning and knowledge is saying this this is the greatest remedy that you can do right and if you have no planets connected to 6000 8000 then you have to go to navadha bhakti we'll talk about it very shortly because saturn is aspecting the 8th house and jupiter is also aspecting the 8th house because of saturn doubt whether this mantra will work whether this particular deity will come to rescue if i do this way will it still be fruitful this doubt is, will stop the channelization of blessings from the life this should not be done secondarily the person should have firm faith in whatever they are doing otherwise it will not work because right because of the influence of jupiter the person will hate the practices of people from another religion i am not saying that he should adopt the practices of people from another religion but at least they should not hate them they should not talk bad about them and they should be highly respectful towards people of another religion and their practices also right i am not telling this person to visit mosque i am not telling i will not tell this person to visit the um, church but i will tell the person don't hate these practices also right and lastly because the eighth house is lorded by sun ego ego that i have had this particular experience ego that i am born into this family ego that i am you know initiated in this particular sect of worship can be very detrimental for this person that he should not have and because sun indicates ego also he should give all of his ego he should surrender all of his ego to the god and he should constantly remember in each and every prayer of prayer of himself that god whatever i am i am only because of your blessings this realization this person should have in fact i will recommend him to daily five times tell that whatever good thing i am having in life whatever name fame status respect i am having in life i am having because of the blessings of god and i am just a mere servant of the god as i always say we are the dogs of god the stray dogs of god that he chooses to bless so removal of ego destruction of ego is what this person should strongly do if they want if he wants the channelization of blessings in his life 
if he wants that all the remedies that he is doing should give him very quick results, then he should do it. Otherwise, there is no solace. And lastly, the nine types of devotion. What happens with devotion? First of all, realization of God will happen. With the realization of God, emancipation will happen. Even if emancipation is not your target, then with the realization of God, good things will happen in your life. If you want that God should always remain with you, take care of everything that is happening in your life. If you want to bang on God at the time of misery, if you want the God to come to your rescue, like Krishna came to the rescue of Draupadi, Krishna comes to the rescue of Arjun, you have to take the path of these nine types of these nine types of devotion. This is your way of how to please God. And this way will best work for you. Now, basically, according to me, whatever method suits you, you should choose that particular method rather than going with horoscope. Still, if one wants to decide based on horoscope, then you have to decide based on the 12th house. The planet which is influencing the 12th house will indicate which type of devotion you should have. If more than one planet is influencing the 12th house, then either use all these types of devotion or take the devotion, take the devotion by the devotion by the most strongest planet who is influencing the 12th house. Now, in this set of devotion, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Samranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanivedanam. These are the nine types of bhakti. The first bhakti is Shravan, listening. Listening to myths related to God, listening to the stories related to God, listening to the importance of God, power of God, chanting the stutras of God continuously. That means at least once every day or one hour every day is the first type of bhakti known by Shravanam, which is signified by Jupiter. This path should be resorted to if Jupiter is influencing the 12th house, situated in 12th house, aspecting the 12th house, or is the 12th lord. Sage Parikshit is an epitome. This Navadha Bhakti, nine types of weaknesses are attributed are shown by, shown for humans how to do this type of bhakti was shown by one great personality from our Vedas and Puranas. The epitome of the bhakti, the epitome of devotion of listening is sage pariksha. The second type of devotion is chanting, singing the glories of God and enlightening people about the glories of God by distributing their by distributing books related to God, by recording uh, stotras, etc., related to God, singing glories of God, talking to people about qualities and character of God, taking the name of the God, thinking about the valor of the God, you know, enlightening people about the valor of God with happiness and excitement is the second side type of bhakti, second type of devotion known by the name of Kirtan. This is signified by Mercury. An example of it is Sage Sukhdev. Right? Sage Sukhdev is the character which is epitome of Kirtan Bhakti. Right? Chanting based devotional practices. Such people, according to me, should form a group of like-minded spiritual aspirants and should organize Conferences, discussions, etc., where they should also invite normal people and discuss about the glories, qualities, characters, and the valor of deity, the chosen deity, whatever they believe in. The third type of bhakti smaran, remembrance. Always thinking of God with the realization that except for God, there is no one whom you can call your own. Remembering the greatness and power of the deity. And visualizing about DT day in and day out as Prahlad used to do is the third type of bhakti known by the name of Smaran, 
which is signified by moon. Always thinking of God. What is called ajapajap. With every breath, think of God. Wake up in the morning, think of God. Before food, think of God. After you sneeze, think of God. Whenever you are sitting free, whenever you have some time, think of God. Like how Rama rescued Sabri. How Rama loved Hanuman. How Krishna, how Krishna advised Arjun. What will be, how much love could have been between them. Remembering these things always day in and day out and before doing anything, after doing everything, remembering God. Like Prahalad used to do is the third type of devotion which is signified by moon. You should do it if moon is connected to the 12th house of your house. The fourth type of bhakti is Padasevan, serving the feet of the deity. Going under the refuse of deity and only thinking that the deity is your own and no one else. Like goddess Lakshmi does to Vishnu is Padasevan, serving the feet of the god and this should be done if Venus is connected to the 12th house of horoscope. Serve the feet of your favorite deity. Right? Daily visit the temple of your favorite deity. Clean it. And only think that God is your rescue. Don't ask for help from anyone but from God. Remember him day in and day out. Signified by Venus. This will change your life. Archana, worship, formal worship. Serving and worshipping the deity by mind, speech and karmas. Right. Is indicated by Saturn. Is the fifth type of bhakti. The epitome of this is Prithuraj. Right. Serving God by mind, that means always thinking of him. Serving God by speech means chanting his sutras, chanting his mantras, talking to people about the glories of the God. And serving the God by karmas, daily going to their temple, donating things to people in the name of the particular deity signified by Saturn. Next is Vandan. Serving the idol of the God Serving the representative of the God. For example, if one wants to serve Krishna, one should serve the representatives of Krishna. Serve the Iskon mission. Right? Serving the devotees. Serving the priests who are into the worship of the deity. Serving the teachers who believe in that particular deity. Serving the guru who taught you about that deity or who teaches anyone about that deity. Serving your parents, paying salutations to the deity and all these people who represent the deity, who are connected to the deity and serving these people by providing food, by providing clothes, by giving your service, by giving financial donations is, in, is the sixth type of bhakti known by Vandana Bhakti. It is influenced by Ketu. It is indicated by Ketu and the epitome of this is Sage Akrur who represented Sri Krishna at one point of time. Das or servitude, which is signified by Hanu, which is signified by Hanuman, should be your preferred way of devotion if Mars is connected to the twelfth house. Serving the deity with all your physical, mental, emotional, financial capability. Thinking of God as your master and treating yourself as the servant of God should be done for Mars. Sakya. Devotion of friendship which is signified by Arjun should be your resort if Rahu is connected to the 12th house. In this you should think God as your friend. Whatever you have uh, Offer everything to the deity. Whatever good or bad karma you are doing. Offer the result of that karma to the deity. Is what Rahu indicates. In Devi. In Devi's Srishti Chandi Saptashati also. Durga Saptashati also. It is told that. On Chaturdashi or Ashtami, whoever worships Devi and offer everything that they possess to Devi and later on uses these things with a firm thought in their mind that all these things are only given by Devi to me 
and if she wants this, she can take it away. And if I am able to use these things, it is only because of the blessings of Devi. Is what is signified the sakya, the friendship type of devotion. Not only that, one should have a very firm faith that if I am doing good karma, I am only doing it to please my friend God. If some bad karma happens to me, my friend God will forgive me and will do my good. Not wishing for any result to happen, but giving the result of all the karma to the Supreme Godhead is indicated by Rahu. Atma Nivedana, self-sacrifice, completely giving yourself to God as King Bali did it in the Vaman episode. When Vaman put his leg on the head of Bali, Bali completely surrendered himself to God. This is the best type of devotion indicated by sun. Should be resorted if sun is connected to 12th house. In this type of devotion, one should completely devote themselves to Godhead. One should think that they are one with God. One should do things after, one should do things, commit different things after inspiration from the Godhead only. And by using all their time, all their money and all the resources should only serve God and the devotees of the God. One should remain happy and satisfied and contented into whatever God gives and should not ask for any wish, but should realize that everything that they are happening, that they are having in life is only because of the God. And there is nothing that they have in their life because of their own worth. So these six, these nine different types of bhaktis one should resort to as per the planet in the 12th house. And once you resort to these type of bhaktis, you will get self-realization. And only after you practice this type of bhakti for one or one, one and a half year, two year, you will slowly, slowly realize that like Narsim came to the rescue of Prahlad and Sri Krishna always guided Arjun. After having this type of devotion for one to two years, you will find that slowly, slowly, God is coming to your rescue. God is taking control of your life. I myself have, you know, like, what, what to say? Leave this point. After doing it for one to two years, you will find that in all of your actions, directly or indirectly, you are guided by God. After resorting to this type of devotion, you will see that in dream or by people, you are guided by God. Whatever wishes and desires you will ask from God that will be fulfilled and God will make sure that you live good, you eat good and whatever is good for you that happens to you for sure. Take one of these paths and you can transform your life forever. In this video, I have given you golden key. Golden key to emancipation. Golden key to unlock blessings. Golden key to have God in your life. Golden key to become self-dependent. Once you fall, once you overcome the Shadripus, come out of the clutches of the Ashtapash and take one of the Navdha Bhakti, you will need no further remedies. You will need nothing further. Slowly, slowly. You will have everything. The bad karmas will burn. And what else to say? There is nothing else that will be needed. Right? Thank you. I wish you will use this knowledge to transform your life. And later on, you people will give me feedback regarding how it changed your life.